You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. We will call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for January 20th, 2021 to order. I just remind everybody that this is a, uh, a uh, virtual meeting, uh, especially in person. Uh, if you would like, just remind everyone when speaking, identify yourself. If you'd like to be recognized, uh, use the raise your hand function, uh, which I believe is a star nine. Um, and to unmute yourself is star six and to remute yourself is star six as well. Uh, under item seven, uh, under other business, we will allow uh, public three minutes to address the board uh, with any new business. All right, with that said, um, we'll go to uh, item one, to approve the board of selected minutes for January 6, 2021. Uh, I do have just, I believe there's one correction. Uh, the, the, it should be April. That was our meet under our meeting schedule. Uh, April, the date will be April 7th and April 21st. Um, I just want to make that correction. I don't know if there's a, a motion to accept the minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as corrected. Second. All right. Moved by Selectman Dombar, seconded by Selectwoman Higgins. Any other discussion, correction? I see uh, Mr. Petrowski has his hand up. Mm -hmm. uh, at the, at Todd Petrowski, are you asking to speak? Uh, yeah, I just had a simple request. Um, I was trying to do this before the meeting started. Um, I was just curious, through the nature of the Parkside petition, if we could possibly move that up after your executive session and after you deal with that, because there's people that want to talk that are on time constraints. We're not going into executive session. Uh, oh, okay. I was just wondering if maybe yep. the tax appeal thing I was saying. Yeah, we'll, we'll move through. Uh, I th yeah, that's off. I think we'll move through uh, uh, quite quickly through this, okay? I'll have a couple items before we get Thank there. you, because there's commissioners that have time constraints. Thank you yeah. very much. Thanks. Okay. Um, oh, one other thing uh, I'd like to just add to under item five, green use, uh, parks and recreation has a request. I'll put that forward in form of a motion. If I can get that seconded. Second. I second. Right, second by Selectman Dunbar. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that item will be added. Item two is off the agenda, correct? Uh, Tristan, the Tanner Perito's not here. Item three, to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Debbie Murdo, Director of Information Technology, to waive the bid for the purchase of installation of, of, what, of what, a telephone systems and uh, communication services with the vendor, TPX Communications. Uh, we have uh, Debbie here. Uh, if you can unmute yourself and Debbie, you want sure. to present? Sure. Um, has everybody, all at least the the three of you, the Board of Selectmen, read my documentation, the backup documentation for this? Yes. And, okay, yeah. great. There, and Thank you. The record, um, there is a Dropbox of all the documentation is included in the Dropbox for uh, those attending the meeting. Go ahead, Debbie. Oh. Okay. So we, we, um, we know the age of our phone system and um, it's over 15 years old and um, it just can't do the job for what we needed to do in town hall and, and at all our other town locations. Um, we already had money appropriated in the last budget 
to help pay for part of this phone system, we just hadn't chose a vendor. And over the past year, we went out and we interviewed eight other vendors. Well, really seven. The eighth one was Frontier, and and that just wasn't going to happen. They didn't have any of the features we wanted. Um, and we wound up doing the first installation with a company that is local to Brantford called TPX Communications. And we did that at the uh, EOC. Uh, it was a very successful. And we wound up doing it for the whole firehouse. And that also was a very uh, successful installation. After that, we went and we did an installation of the TPX Polycom phone system um, at the counseling center. And that was successful. So basically, each of these installations have been below the purchasing threshold, but the intention is to get every location, every building in the town that is on the 15-year-old phone system on the new voice over IP cloud solution. Once this is all done, um, and this is a process because as we do each building, it, little things come up, so it takes time. Um, but when these are all done, the monthly communication bill will be over the purchasing threshold. So I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that this is the vendor we selected and that I'd like to proceed with um, to continue this project. Okay, thank you, Debbie. Um, yeah, and I commend you on the work you did and the research that you did with different vendors uh, and, and rolling this out. And I think as we've talked, uh, as the board has considered other uh, times when we waive the bid, uh, oftentimes there's been multiple pricing solicited. We're just trying to uh, um, meet the requirements of our town charter. So while this is, um, as you said, under the, th each individual project is under the threshold. It was the, um, the lower of the eight that you had uh, uh, sought out. We're just trying to, again, be sure we adhere to the charter. Uh, any questions regarding this? Uh, my question is, um, so we're not, we're not necessarily waving the bid for this one building. We're actually, or should we be waving the bid? Um, for the future of any building that's gonna have this system and the phone systems. Exactly, that's to continue the project because having each building on the same system makes them all compatible. So should we amend this, this to, or maybe just clarify uh, Selectman Cosgrove that uh, we're waiving the bid for this system period and that way there they don't have to keep coming back every time it's over the threshold? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, to clarify that a little bit better in item three, which we're considering, it does say, uh, I, I see you're looking ahead, obviously, to number four may just be, somebody may consider it's just for that project. But yeah, I think, uh, let the record show that this is to be, uh, PPX is going to be our uh, vendor for uh, phone station, uh, phone systems uh, throughout town wide. Oh, thanks. Yep. Yes, and if I could also add, um, yeah. Mr. Luckman Dunbar, that this has been the phone system that they also selected in North Brantford, East Haven, Guilford's looking at it, and Northford is, uh, North Haven is looking at it. There is no direct state contract for VoIP cloud phone systems. What is on state contract is to go through a reseller going directly to TPX, we've been able to get a much lower pricing. So this system is a little bit different than the PD or the same as oh, there. We're just using a different vendor to take the path. No, it's completely different phone system. The one that's currently at police department and all the buildings is the yep. NEC, NEC hybrid system. This system works off of the cloud and it's VoIP. The advantage of that is for instance, you have individuals, let's say they are ill or they contract, contract COVID and are working from home. As long yep. as this phone connects up to an internet connection, their extension goes with them home. Okay, they work thank from you. Home. You're welcome. Thanks. Okay. I'll move it. All right, so moved by Selectman Dunbar. 
second. Second by Slepo Higgins. I see uh, Tracy Everson has her hand up. Go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you uh, for Slickman. I just note that this meeting doesn't appear to be recorded uh, up in the uh, corner. It's being yeah. recorded uh, through BCTV. Oh. As we done. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, is there anyone else have their hand up? Let me just check the other. I thought for Solomon, I think put his hand down. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Pass unanimously. <clears throat> Item four to consider and if appropriate approve a request from Debbie Murdo, Director of Information Technology, to waive the bid for the installation and maintenance of cameras and milestone camera software at the transfer station and award the contract to Omni Data in the amount of $25,309. And I, again, I apologize. I misspoke when thinking that this was the same vendor so, uh, on the previous uh, <laughs> item. Go ahead, uh, Debbie. Yeah. So, um, the bid really is just it's for this location we have been using uh omni data out of west haven to do all our installations for a long time when it concerns cctv and the milestone software there is only other two vendors in connecticut who are equipped to install the milestone system this is what we have in place at the police department fire department town hall community house and now we'd like to get the transfer station on board with the same uh, CCTV system and the milestone camera. What would happen is they would add the transfer station into our uh, executive management in milestone into the network. So from any of our locations that currently have the software in place, we'd be able to view the cameras. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. And the only thing I'd uh, like to add, I, I think this would help um, not only with the safety, as we know, there's a lot of activity um, that occurs up at the transfer station with trucks, machines, and residents coming in, uh, convenient, you know, in that site, as well as quality control of what is being uh, placed into our um, recycling and solid waste stream. So I'm supportive of this request and this being done. Uh, with that, uh, any other questions or comments? I'll move it. Moved by Selectman, moved by Selectman Dunbar, select, second by Selectwoman Higgins. All in favor say aye. 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 Passed unanimously. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Item five, green use to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from Brantford Arts and Culture Alliance for the use of the town green on September 25th and 26th, 2021 to hold an art display in market. So moved. Second. Moved by Selectman Higgins, second by Selectman Dunbar. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, to consider and if appropriate, approve a request from the Brantford Community Garden for the use of the town green on May 15th, 2021 with the rain date of May 16th. 16th, 2021, and August 21st, 2021, ra rain date, Sunday, August 22nd, 2021, to Sunday, September 26th, 2021, to hold the plant and produce sales. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Pass unanimously. Uh, parks and recreation request to hold. Uh, so you want to build a snowman on the town green uh, for the month of February. I'll move it. Second. Been moved by Slackman Dunbar, second by Slackman Higgins. All in favor say aye. 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 Pass unanimously. Thank you. Item six, correspondence. Uh, we have a letter art from the RTM, uh, a couple from the RTM clerk. So dear Board of Selectmen, this correspondence will serve as official notice that two agenda items from the November 18th, 2020 RTM meeting are being referred to the Board of Selectmen. The first is a citizen 
letter concerning the removal of signs in and around October 2019. The Public, Public Services Committee made a motion to take no action on this issue. That motion was amended to refer the matter to the Board of Selectmen. The RTM adopted the amended motion and referred the matter to the Board of Selectmen. Finally, have this item placed on the agenda for the next Board of Selectmen meeting. The second item was a citizen petition, petition regarding Parkside. The chairman of the Rules and Ordinance Committee stated that the RTM had no jurisdiction and offered a motion to refer the matter to the Board of Selectmen. In a unanimous vote, the RTM agreed to refer the matter to the Board of Selectmen. Kindly have this item placed on the agenda for the next Board of Selectmen meeting. Selectman Cosgrove, uh, I, I like to comment on on A, the sign. Yep, and I will as well. But, uh, okay, ahead, yeah. Um, I, I realized they that this was sent back to the board. Um, however, this sounds more like a a ordinance issue. Um, the the main issue that seems to be happening all this time as to where can signs go, who can put them there. Who's then going to have to take them down? Um, would this not be best? And, and this is not passing it back and forth. That that's not my intent. Having a solution is my intent. Shouldn't this, I, I think, be sent to rules and ordinance where they can look at the state statute that yourself, you know, you refer to. A year or so ago, uh, you had to look at when the town went out to look at things, um, you know, the zoning regulations come up with something. I don't care what it is that we all abide by. And and I think that will make it better for the citizens. They'll know what is allowed, what's not allowed. The politicians that put the signs up. And, and, and I guess the other part of what I'm looking for is it'll protect our employees when they have to go out there and take criticism, you know, when they have to go and take some of these signs down, wouldn't it be easier if we just lead the way as to what is and is not allowed and, and how we go about it. And, and maybe we could spend less time, you know, having people argue, they took my sign. They didn't take my sign. Cold cut. Here it is. You can put the sign 20 feet in, whatever it comes out to be. If they're not, they have a right to get picked up. But, but I'm not sure that we do that. I, I think that, you know, the legislative body, the Rules and Ordinance Committee would be more suited for that. And we just come up with a solution instead of just batting this around. I mean, that would be my suggestion um, because we spend a lot of time and we're really just not getting anywhere. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your comments. Um, and, and I will just say, well, first of all, just the what I look back to research what was before the RTM, so I knew what was being referred to us because they it didn't wasn't included in a letter. So what was before the RTM it said an examination of the targeted unauthorized removal of town hall corrupt town hall fraud and fighting for a fair process signs and state highways by the Public Works Department. Okay, to your, um, I would be supportive of looking if the town needs to adopt it in a local ordinance. Um, However, uh, signs in the uh, state or in public right of way, um, th these signs are not permitted. Uh, and that, that is, there's a statute that exists. Um, and as far as this item that was before the RTM, um, it says an examination of the, the targeted and unauthorized removal. Well, I can certainly say without a doubt that the town has remove signs um, for many, many years. I did recognize, the, uh, acknowledge the fact that perhaps they were lax over the few, but you can go back uh, several administrations as well as several uh, uh, um, personnel changes within uh, public works and signs were removed uh, frequently out of the right of way, both town and state right of way. So we'll be clear on that. Um, so these were not targeted and uh, nor unauthorized. Uh, you know, when we we have done it and we have done it since, um, and it, it wasn't limited to uh, an individual or a specific sign or a specific business. The ones that were located were removed. So therefore, I think that was addressed 
finally at the RTM level. Uh, however, even though they ultimately decided that was my answer then, and that's my answer now. However, uh, again, if we feel that there should be uh, to see if a local ordinance is required uh, to keep the right of ways clear of, of signage, then um, I'm more than happy to explore that. If it's required. But again, under state statute, the signage in the right of way is not is not permitted. There's 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 certain signage that's permitted, and uh, uh, what has been removed is is not permitted under state statute. Okay. Any further discussion? On? Okay. I see. Uh, Todd Petrowski, you just have to state your name and speak. Yes, uh, Todd Petrowski here. I would just like to clarify something here. Is, um, you know, these signs that are in question were up in, in public areas, you know, Atlantic Wharf, and they were also on my personal property. And they were removed. People came onto my personal property and took these signs off, as well as other places around town. And this past election year, the same political signs were in the same exact spots and none of them were taken down. So I would just like clarification on how come that, you know, uh, a Robin Comey sign or a Mark Riccio sign or a Margaret Strecker sign or a Joey Laporta sign or Christine Cohen sign was OK in front of Atlantic Wire or they were OK on my personal property. But when I had a town hall corrupt sign, on my personal property that public works trespassed onto my property because I had made sure I had my sign six feet in off the road because I live on a state road. And I want to know why that was able to happen when these same signs were able to stay up during the election. And that's all I like to say. I'd like an answer to that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Public works did not remove uh, signs from private property or in front of private property. So even those ones that were uh, that are placed on, on private property, we're talking within the right of way. So, listen, uh, I, I think in, in your case, I, I do not believe Public Works removed those signs for the example you're giving. Um, what they what, what they have removed was signs that were and continue to remove signs that are clearly just placed in, in right of way. Uh, and can hear you. Sorry, not in front of uh, private property. That's what they have focused on in uh, uh, for. I can I, I can say decade. Um, that's what they remove, and that's what they have been removing. And it. So I hope that answers your question. Well, that is an answer to your question. I hope you. I see Selectman Dombar was muted if you want to unmute yourself. All right. Any other comments? Thanks. All right. Oh, hang on. Go ahead, Mr. Cook. I resent being muted while this meeting is going on. I want to say that. Second of all, I'd like to have this item moved behind the park side item. You have people in here that want to speak to the park side. I have a presentation I'd like to make on the signs that I'd like to use screen sharing. I've contacted both the second and third selectmen. I hope that they will back me up on the screen sharing request because it's the least that you could do for a citizen. But right now, because there's so many people in here, including commissioners on a timetable, I'd like to have the park side um, issue moved in front yeah, of mine. Okay, is so that your request? Have... Yes, please. Let's move on. Well, I'd like to come back. I'd like to come back. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just go back to the second part of that. So, <clears throat> getting back to the second part of the letter, and actually, I think there's a third one too that we had received since from the clerk. Uh, it says 
the agenda item that was before the RTM. It was a petition item as stated in the letter. And the item was an examination of past and present living conditions at Parkside Village Housing Complex, its oversight and its oversight by the Brantford Housing Authority. Uh, circulator's name was uh, Todd Petrowski, who has his hand up. I'll ask if you. Yes, thank you. And for starters, I'd like to, if, if it's okay with the board, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Michael Paracone speak first. And then I would also like to have Commissioner Colello speak second. And then I will come back to me and we'll go from there because there's a lot more people I'd like to speak, but they're on time constraints. So if that's okay with the board, I would like to just pass my, you know, comment over to them. All right, well, we're gonna allow public comment. So- uh, Well, do you want the full presentation now or do, or could we, because this is all part of the presentation. I mean, this has been an ongoing issue for five years. Yeah. So, I mean, it's up to you. Go ahead. I, it, Yes. Can I please remind everyone that uh, they have three minutes and they can use it as best they can and as quickly as they can so that everybody could be heard. Right. Thank you. Select one of All right. I don't see uh, is Mr. Paracone here. Uh, I see Mr. Colello. Uh, would you like to speak? Uh, uh, this is Mark Colello. Jamie, I don't really have much to say. I mean, I, I really need, to, I haven't been uh, on top of everything that's been going on because I've been so, you know, so busy with my own personal life. And I, so I really don't know what the, I, I know what the concerns are that we had actually spoke about previously. And I think that, you know, I, I don't know to what extent they're being worked on as far as the concerns of other commissioners that are on the board and continue to get reappointed to the positions that they've been on for many years without allowing other people a fair chance of, uh, of, of uh, being in those designated positions. And then we find out a lot of things okay. along the way, like um, um, <clears throat> not enough money being allocated for certain things on budgets and they have shortfalls of in excess of 18 or $20,000, uh, even from, from the previous budget year of 2020. Um, as far as the the concern was really with uh, with the treasurer and the uh, and the current chairperson, um, no one else really has an opportunity to be in those positions, and I don't know how long that's been going on. But I have, I'm very concerned about those people being in the same designations for so long and not being checked by other commissioners because there are still a lot of unanswered questions uh, regarding the housing authority. So I, we're really limited as to what I can do. I mean, I came on with the best intentions of the residents at Parkside Village. But unfortunately, in my experience, I don't see that that's what's happening throughout the rest of the, um, the uh, Housing Association members. As far as any of the particulars that they wanted to speak about tonight, I'm really not quite sure what's going on. I just jumped into this real quick. Um, but I don't really have much more to say than I've already said because I don't know enough of information. Okay, thank you. I think we have uh... okay, uh, Michael Paracone. Yes, could you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm not sure. Did you receive the email I sent you last week after the um, Brantford um, Housing Authority meeting? I, I sent you information that was sent to me by Yale Law student Emily Gabler. Um, during that meeting, Ray Ingraham was also on, and I asked who has the power to hire and fire members and Yale Law student Emily Gabler said it was the first selectman and she sent me supporting documents. Now I know we have attorney Jay Pottinger on here so um, maybe he could elaborate on that if that is true if she spoke correctly or incorrect. Okay is that the extent of your uh, yeah well I want to know because like according okay, to her it's uh, you as the power. Uh, I can I, I can answer that. I, I, I wasn't at that meeting, so I'm not, I won't, but I, from what I know from state, what I've read in the state statute is that the, um, the appointing body, uh, which in this, in the town of Brantford is the board of selectmen. So we, uh, and again, I, I can't cite which statute number it is off the top of my head, but it's eight, it might be 843. Um, 
Uh, we are the appointing body, which the first selectman is a member of, and um, the board of selectmen, the appointing body, uh, can remove members um, for um, you know essentially ne neglect uh, of duty, and uh, there's a few other a standard there that they had to meet. Oh, okay, so, so so that's that's it. It's not the, the, the be clear. To be clear, what you said it, it was the the first selectman doesn't hire or fire. There was when an initial. There's language regarding the chief elected official of municipality when they're initially establishing a housing authority. But once the authority is established in the town, my understanding uh, here in Brantford is the board of selectmen is the appointing body, and uh, the appointing body under state statute. Um, uh, does have the ability under uh, extreme in instances remove a member. Okay, so so you can remove members is what you're saying. Um, you can. There's a, a a it's not remove at will. There's a process and notification needs to sure. be and a hearing needs to occur. Uh, okay, okay. So so uh, my reading so, of the so, statute now. So, there's plenty of lawyers on the call, it appears. There's somebody will be chiming in. Oh, okay, so I'll bring up a specific, and maybe we could discuss whether or not. Sure. And, and Mark Coelho is on. And I know when Mark joined about a year and a half ago, one thing he wanted to look at was the banks and financial records for the previous three years. And when he approached Kate Collins, um, to this date, I still don't think he's received what banks has the money and those three years of bank statements. So that would that be considered grounds to be fired if they're not working together as a team? Mark, did you get those documents? Okay, okay so why, why, why are we allowing this to happen is, is the thing we're basically letting two people control. I'm going to just why are you all? Excuse me? Go ahead. Somebody had unmuted. Oh, oh no. So, so that, that's what I'm saying. I, I think these members need to work together. If not, they have to go because yes. was uh, uh, requesting a document so he could better, better help. And for 16 months, he's been ignored. Why is that? Uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I just want to make sure. I will just add. And Kate's on the call. I mean, I mean, Kate's on the phone. Well, let's see what Kate has to say. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but if Mark required documents, over a year ago and you're holding back, you don't know who has the bank accounts, you have them, you know where they are, let him review it and be upfront and honest. Okay. And we're gonna just sit here and allow, allow that to continue happen. Kate, yeah. Kate, defend yourself, please. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pericon. That's the I'm end not, of your question. Kate, defend yourself, please. Listen, we're not gonna have citizens debating back and forth. I wanna know, is that your question? And that's your yeah, statement. Yeah, and, and the, the question also is like to Mark Colello, did you ever receive those documents? Okay, I will give him the opportunity to answer. Okay, thank you. And I will just add, and I have shared with all members of the Brantford Housing Authority and, a, um, and all current members, and even when uh, Mr. Colello and, uh, uh, and another member who's who has since had a, a stepped off, was appointed. Um, you know, I think it's clear that there is a lack of confidence within the Brantford Housing Authority throughout our community. And it is the obligation of the commission members to restore that confidence. And as far as working together, I absolutely agree. And that's where there needs to be uh, communication, transparency, and respect uh, among the commission members before <clears throat> before the the community uh, will before they can start to earn the respect and the confidence of the community as a whole. That's inclusive of the residents of Parkside as well as the greater community of Brant. I think we do have a few others that have their hand raised. <sighs> I see. Uh, Tracy Everson, once again, you just have to unmute yourself, state your name. Thank you, uh, First Luckman Cosgrove. This is Rep Town Representative Tracy Everson. I uh, represent the 5th District, uh, where Parkside is located. 
Um, before this petition was filed in March of last year, there was another one in 2018 claiming financial improprieties by the BHA. Last year, during discussion before the RTM of the current petition, it was stated that four and a half million dollars is missing. That prompted the RTM to refer this matter back to the Board of Selectmen. Since then, I've learned that back in 2018, the town did engage the auditing firm Markham to review Brantford Housing Authority financial record, and a review was done at Merritt Properties in January of 2019. I then turned to you for Selectman Cosgrove and others at Town Hall requesting any and all documentation relating to this. After filing a Freedom of Information complaint with the state, I received answers. There was no audit. Markham's review, detailed in a one-page memo, found no exception, no exceptions, in all caps. After reviewing bank deposits and rent receipts, bank statements, and cash disbursements, the state also conducts an audit of the BHA every two years. And you can review those online. Were Markham's findings ever shared with those who filed the original petition in 2018 or this one in 2020? If not, why not? The record could have been set straight a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that was shared when we when we uh, had, as you stated, I forget what year it was, uh, 2018. No, it had to be pre prior to that. When that original petition came forward and we had asked Markham to review um, the, uh, uh, the information scary. that Brantford Housing oh, Authority um, had submitted. They said I see you're wrong. Okay. Oh, jeez. They never stopped. All right, I see uh, there's a 606 number. You can unmute yourself by hitting star six to state your name. I believe that's uh, in 3893 yep. Representative yep. Yes, hi, uh, Representative Sires. I want to make a few clarifications and I'll try to bullet point them. As I've been involved with Parkside since 2016, one, the way they conduct the meetings are abhorrent. They do not follow any. Robert rules or any town rules, they continue to be abhorrent and there needs to be either a meeting or an oversight because they're supposed to follow the same rules that the town does. And I really truly hope that that starts. Two, about the audit, it was not a forensic audit. The material was provided by the ask and it was reviewed as the same as the state audit. I do believe that they People were looking for a forensic audit. There has never yet been clarification as to where the money has been spent. There's always been projected budgets. There has never been real budgets to ratify the projected budgets to the real budgets. And this needs to go back quite a ways. I'm going to ask a simple question. Why is it that recently a resident was caught in the middle of a death trap fire escape where the fire department had to come and put a lock on the lips, a lock on the lips. Somebody, oh, it's, it's, it's horrid there that somebody was stuck there. And they were given a inspection by the town fire marshal under Marshall Heffernan months ago with 17 pages of violations. Why is the building like that? Where, where, why aren't we keeping those people safe? Why is nobody overseeing it? I ask people to go talk to the residents. I beg you. I beg you to talk to the residents and not the ones who are set up to talk to the people. Go unexpected, meet them at the stores and talk to them. They feel so left out by the town. They are in a very terrible situation and they are frightened to speak to anyone because they are so afraid of getting reprimanded or kicked out. We want our seniors to live like this because I certainly don't. And for the record, I don't know that that lift has been fixed, but I sure go constantly and help these people out. And I do say the town, I'm asking the Board of Selectmen to get more involved. Um, First Selectman Cosgrove is right. 
I was on the meeting last night with Representative Wing uh, about the 830G in the future and the Greenwich and Westport Housing Authority officials were on that meeting. It's a Zoom meeting. You can all look at it. And one thing they said they did was change their entire housing authority and structure to get more involved with the town and to make the housing authority more accountable to the people and to the town and keep it a town entity. And they, they restructured their housing authorities and they have had nothing but pleasure since. And I do believe that made me feel comforted that people are in the town are getting more aware of it. I'm, I'm begging people of the, the, for selectman panel, please talk to those people. And we do need a more forensic audit. Uh, Representative Everson is correct, but I've reviewed those documents through FOIA in the FOIA court with um, some of the housing authority commissioners and their attorney. And the documents are just template. If you look at it, there's a, a a line item for fixing the lifts that was not under the current people. It was a past uh, housing authority. If you have a line item that you're fixing the lifts, why are they why are they in the condition they're in? So look, I, I would call me any day. It's not up to my three minutes now. I have documents upon documents. I will show you what the uh, audits are. I will will point out what Commissioner Colello and Commissioner. Mastrangelo had a robust debate with the other two. They want to see invoices, accountability for money, and every time somebody asks that, they get humiliated or ignored or change the topic. It must stop. And I really hope with the Chapa uh, Penny Fisher and with the Yale Law students stating that the first selectman or the board of selectmen of the RTM is responsible for overseeing it, we need to get more involvement. And it has nothing to do with all of us. It has everything to do with the 90 seniors who are Bramford residents in our town. Because it hurts me since 2016 that we argue about stuff except for talk to the people. So let's include them in our conversations. And I thank you. Okay, thank you, Representative Sires. Uh, <clears throat> Resident Brian Nichols. Can you hear me? Yes. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you turn down if you got another uh, source on. No, you it's my phone. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So my one question is this. Island View condominiums were built in 1971. This establishment was built basically around 1974. You have 193 condo units over there that are still up and standing. Why do we have to knock it down? If everyone was doing their job, I'm totally confused on this. In regards to the audit, why did we never do a forensic forensic audit? And that kind of goes towards you, Jamie. Not throwing you under the bus, but in all reality, there's no forensic audit. There's a ton of money missing, handwritten receipts. You know that doesn't fly in business, Jamie. You've been in this business. It will never fly. You couldn't give that to the IRS. And basically, that's what I'm going to end on. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, I think we had Nancy Wachowski. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi, I just want to piggyback a couple things off Carol and what she and other people have said. I've been on um, a few of the Zoom meetings for Brantford Housing, and I've also been knowing what's going on with them for oh, 30 years. A dear friend of mine was the maintenance person there before they let them all go and brought Merit in. And that place used to be run ship shape. Nothing went unfixed or broken. But anyway, they don't use Robert rules or parliamentary procedure at their meetings. This last meeting, I don't know how many members are on the, the Brantford housing board, but there's a new member, a woman. It seems like it's women against men. 
And I hate to say that, but that's what it was. Three women against the two men, against Mark Colello and uh, gentleman Jerry. And no matter what they said, the women said, okay, three to two, not passed. Okay, three to two, not passed. And the poor third woman is new, I think, and they voted her in as secretary, which she doesn't even know how to do because she said she doesn't want to take it over right away until she's more familiar. Well, hello. <laughs> you don't need a uh, college degree to be a secretary and take minutes. And they just, they went into executive session in one meeting and one woman said, okay, get out. And this was an actual meeting they had down at Parkside too. They don't, they didn't do what you guys do. We're going numb here. You can't hear it. Everybody get out. They wouldn't let people talk. It's a joke. It's a joke. I mean, the kids run a better Congress meeting when they're in high school and they're doing that, what, Continental Congress or whatever. They run a meeting better. So that money's not accounted for, that the buildings are in shambles. I wouldn't want my parents living there. I wouldn't go there myself. So I can see why people are upset and they need to do something with the board. You need to get involved. They need to have members on there. They have two new members who they care. They want to see changes and they're not allowed because the three ladies just keep overvoting them. So thank you. Thanks for your comments. Uh, I think we'll have, uh, okay. Wayne Cook. Yes, a couple of quick things. You know, um, I want to say this first. I have three minutes, so I'm going to use my three minutes. You know, I started off looking at what was going on in this town, obviously, with Costco. And I'm not going to get into that right now. But what happened is people knew we were going through that. And they would come to me and they would say, you know, we're going through something else on our side of town or whatever. That's how I got involved with the Jay Medlin thing. That's how I got involved with the Atlantic Wharf thing with the people over on Wilfred Avenue. And that's how I got involved in the Indian next thing with Parkside Avenue. I went to one Brantford Housing Authority meeting and I waited through the whole meeting. I raised my hand, very polite. I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. What happened? I think it was Mrs. Collins who's here. She said, who is this person? And she adjourns the meeting along with the chairman, I guess, Mrs. Lowe. And that was the end of it. And I said to myself, you know, entirely unacceptable. That is not going to stand. So I got interested in what went on down there. And what I found out was a couple of things. One, that the audit that they talk about does not go back where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to go, as I understand it, to the year 2012 up to 2017. That's when the, the, the uh, missing funds occurred right in there. So for the state to say, oh, we did an audit, doesn't matter what you did it in 2018, 19. Go back to 2012 to 2017, do a forensic audit as Representative Sires and many, many other people down there recommended. And now maybe you'll get to the truth. What I also heard was that as much as four and a half million dollars, and I don't know this, but this is what I heard from a number of people, is unaccounted for. Four and a half million dollars is unaccounted for. Now, you got Mrs. Lowe here tonight. You got Mrs. Collins here tonight. They're the targets of, you know, what goes on in terms of people's questions. I tell you one thing, if people were accusing me of losing four and a half million dollars, I would have plenty to say about it. And they've said nothing, absolutely nothing. So what do I do? Well, what I do, you know, I took it to the attorney general. It's sitting in the attorney general's office. It's, it's sitting in the uh, housing department of the state. And quite frankly, it's sitting and I have to follow through on this in the New Haven office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Because when you're, when you're missing four and a half million dollars, that is serious, serious problem. I'm sorry, that's a serious problem. And for those two ladies to sit here and say nothing, and almost as bad for the first selectman of this town to sit here and say nothing as he has over the last several years, is nothing short, forget about irresponsible, forget about irresponsible. You know, that's not even a, a word that even comes close. I mean, I think what you're doing is absolutely being, you know, completely unaccountable to the citizens of this town, which you swore an oath on the Constitution that you would uphold and you're not doing it. You all took, you know, a, an oath and you're not living up to it. Shame on all of you. Shame on all of you. And I'll go back to Costco, but make sure that you know 
that me and a lot of other citizens that know more than I do down there are on this and we're not letting it go. Hey. I think, uh, Mr. Petrowski, you wanted to add a few last words? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right, thank you. I would just, because we can't screen share, I'm just going to start off, because I have a little bit of a presentation there. I'm going to start off with a, a comment by Tacey Lowe directed towards me through uh, a secondhand thing, and I will show it. Her comments as a president commissioner says, Todd is a do-nothing hate instigator, not worth the oxygen he uses. And you can see it right there, and I will email that to all of you. Now, my attorney told me to bring it to you guys before I file suit against her for defamation and slander. So I'm doing the proper things. Number two, I'd also like to read a letter to you, which you were CC'd on, Mr. Cosgrove, also because we can't screen share, saying of how the Housing Authority made a deal with Beacon if they don't you know get this deal passed through they're liable well that's their problem that's not the town's problem that that the seniors have to lose their housing and we're going to lose town property because the housing authority made this deal that's not our problem and i'm going to go right through and i'm going to get it i'm going to read that letter if you don't mind because i think it's very important to this to what we're talking about because this all happened under your watch and you let this happen. And this isn't a secret. I mean, the Doug Dennis thing was your fault. And I don't mean to personally attack you because I'm not trying to do that. But you let him stay on to sign this contract. And for another three years, they took on Yale Law. Yale Law even said it's your responsibility to appoint and take people off. Now, you appointed Mark, Cal Mark Colello. You appointed Victoria Verderam, who quit after two months of seeing how bad this board worked you re, you you uh put jerry I, I i'm gonna butcher his last name mestrangelo you put him on there and so you're capable of making these decisions now you have a citizen's petition in front of you of 50 signatures that want this straightened out so the question is are you going to go against the citizens once again or are you going to fix the problem because what's happening down there, first selectman, is you're losing, or we as a town, and I like to say we, are losing senior housing for the people that need it the most. These people make no, and you can even ask your buddy Massacane, because he does a, a podcast on it. These people maybe make $1,000 a month. They have nowhere to go. They're going to lose their housing for some monstrosity, which we're going to lose uh, uh, lose our parking lot for our ball fields, and you do nothing about it. And you've been in support for five years about this. And we had to go to a citizen's petition to get this in front of the RTM for them to say, well, it's not in our purview. And now it's back to you guys. So what are you going to do? I mean, we don't need to present any more evidence. Are you going to do the right thing and get rid of these people? Or are you going to let it go? And if you do let it go, I, 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 I encourage you to say this. If you do let this go, I encourage you to say, I don't care about the seniors. I don't care about losing our town property. And I'm going to let it go. Or do the right thing. If you can't get rid of both commissioners at once, start at the top. Get rid of one. Get a replacement and get rid of the other. Because that's all we're asking. And it's in your personal purview to do it. And if you don't want to do it, you know, the next guy look, looked upon about you, but I'm going to read the letter right now that you were CC'd on, that the Grantford Housing Authority blatantly violated their charter to make a deal with Beacon to get this project pushed through. And I'm going to get it right now for you, and I'm going to read it because we can't screen share, but I will read it to the public, and I think it's very valid to the public. Excuse me for one second. I just got to get it. Okay, here it is. This is from Tacey Lowe, who is the president, which you appointed and you reelected. In light of Commissioner Colello and Mastrangelo's email to Penny Fisher at Chaffa, requesting a cease and desist in the light of the LIHTC application for Parkside Village 1, I'd like to remind the board of BHA's ongoing obligations under the site development agreement as amended, dated. 
May 17, 2016, which is under your jurisdiction, Mr. Cosgrove, according to the SDA slash BHA, must, must, this is the best part, must cooperate with Beacon to structure the plan for redevelopment in order to achieve the most competitive 9% low income housing tax credit application reasonably possible. Now, I don't know if you know anything about this, but I'm going to continue reading. You were CC'd on it. Estrangelo's communications with Chaffa requesting a cease and desist of the LIHTC application directly conflict with BHA's obligation to assist with obtaining the LIHTC funding under the SDA. If BHA fails to meet its obligations, it must pay Beacon for all the pre-development costs. Now, here's a question to you. Why is the Brantford Housing Authority, who is supposed to be for senior citizens, making a deal to do something with non-senior citizen housing? That's a question for you. Okay, for Beacon, for all the pre-development costs, they have been spent to date approximately $1 million at the least estimate, section 7-B and 7C. As you all know, BHA does not have $1 million. Beacon could look to foreclose on judgment lean on Parkside 1 and 2 in order to effectuate co collection of such a large debt. Moreover, Commissioners Colello and Mastrangelo may be in breach of their fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of the Brantford Housing Authority. The Commissioner's communications with Chaffa without the knowledge of any other members of the board may cause BHA to violate its ongoing obligations under the SDA and render it liable to Beacon for pre-developmental costs as described above. As such, Commissioners Colello and Mastrangelo's action constitute neglect of duty, which justifies removing a commissioner from office pursuant to Section 8-43 of the Connecticut General Statutes. Please let me know if you have any questions. Tacey Lowe. So what do you think about that? What do you think about that? I mean, give me an answer. Yeah, well, as I stated in the very beginning, that this board of commission, these housing commissioners need to start understanding how they have to work as a, an authority for the best interest of, of the residents that they're serving. And in terms of uh, the conduct between, between the commissioners, um, certainly not something I endorse. And as I stated, that I had communicated to all commissioners that they are responsible to restore the confidence uh, with for the the housing authority. Okay. Secondly, I just want to address the fact that you stated and you asked a question that um, I have no concern for the seniors or the the residents that are living there. All right. I have publicly stated. I have stated to the commission my concerns with the project and what will that do for the most vulnerable residents that we have in town, okay? So your, your statement is uh, false. Well, why didn't you do what? anything then? What's that? Why didn't you do anything then? It's, you had this in Mr. your pocket Petrowski, for five years. Mr. Petrowski. You, no, no, listen to me. Yeah. You had this for five years in your pocket, okay? Five years you've been told you had a citizen's petition for to remove Doug Dennis. You you ignored it. You had nor enormous amount of uh, people going against this, and you sit there and you did nothing. Now all of a sudden you're going to play. Well, I can't do nothing. Yale Law, who I'm assuming is a prestigious school, and I'm assuming they're experts, said you have the right to remove and put people on there. Why are you letting this go on? Why are you not, turning your not, back on the citizens? I, Answer that question. Thank you. Thank you. And no, I, have, you. No. I, have I have stated that the Board of Selectmen have the authority. We are the appointing body, which you've laid out uh, the number of uh, commissioners that we have appointed. Uh, and we have, for neglect of uh, duty, there's a, a, a clause in the statute that allows for the removal of a, a commissioner. Um, so I think that's been addressed. All right, we have, I'm just trying to see. All right. 
I ask uh, Mr. Brockett has his hand up. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, uh, First Selectman Cosgrove. This is Representative Brockett. I just wanted to clear up some confusion regarding some comments uh, that were made at previous meetings in this meeting concerning the Little League fields. As I understood the comments, um, there was a suggestion that some ball fields may be lost. And since I've spent a good portion of my life down there, I looked at some research with respect to this, and, and I wanted to know that if I was correct. Um, in the fall of 2017, the RTM approved a transfer concerning a piece of uh, land at the Sliney Complex where they play baseball to the Brantford Housing Authority. And in exchange, there was a piece of the parking lot, which is a small triangle that's going back to the housing authority. Um, and in essence, it just impacts one small portion of Sliney 1, um, which is only one of seven fields down there. Um, so my first question is, um, is that accurate? And if so, then you would agree that there's really no impact to the fields down there. And my follow-up question is, um, has that transaction been processed after it was approved by the RTM in 2017? Thank you. So to answer that, the RTM had approved, you're right, in this, this, this comment regarding the loss of the field, it was just the opposite. The housing authority property uh, was, or I should say, one of the Little League fields was a significant part of that field was on housing authority property. So the, what the, was before the RTM a couple of years ago was to adjust that line so the entire part of the field was then would become town property. So we weren't giving up uh, the baseball field. We were trying to be sure that we secured the field in perpetuity uh, as town property. Um, <clears throat> the uh, as the last time I checked, which was several, it was a several months ago, that had still not been uh, filed and signed off on. So, still in the mode. Can I make a comment, please? Follow up. Well, let me just get to make sure there's uh, no new people that haven't spoke yet, if you don't mind. Well, I'd like to follow up to that comment, please. Hold on one second. All right. This All is right, Wayne. go ahead. This is Wayne Cook again. Can I just say one thing for everybody's, you know, just absorption here? Try to absorb this one thing, everybody, because I'm trying to absorb it myself. We have a we have a housing authority in the town of Brantford, who people say are not accounting for four and a half million dollars. The chairman and the vice chairman are at this meeting and they are saying nothing. And the first selectman of this town, regardless what jurisdiction he has, he certainly has some leadership role to play in this case, saying, I don't really care. You commissioners go work it out yourself. What? You know, where did I get off the train and enter the twilight zone? I mean, let's be real about that. You know, I thought Costco was bad. I thought Costco was bad that you have a, a wetlands officer, you know, forging a peer review, and then you cover that up. This almost pale. I mean, this almost makes Costco pale by comparison. You know, Jamie, let me just okay. say, this to you. let me just say this to you as your former friend. Yeah. What happened to you? What on earth happened to you? You know, seven years ago, you entered and we all had such optimism and such hope. You know, and what happened to you? You know, I like to know. Because, you know, as your former friend, I remember what you were. Is this what the office does to people? Is this what it does to you? Is this what it did to DeRoss? Okay. I'm ashamed of you. Just to be clear, the petition that was forwarded to the, from the board, uh, from the RTM, as I stated in the beginning, was an examination of past and present living conditions at Parkside Village Housing Complex and its oversight of the Board of Housing Authority. This mention of the four and a half million dollars missing quite honestly that was something uh i don't know if the 
RTM uh, discussed. I don't even know where that number came from. So if somebody has, I see Mr. Colello, a commission member, perhaps he could shed some light on the number of four and a half million and where that even generated. Uh, Mark, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, okay. Uh, as, far, as far as that four and a half million, I don't know where that number came from. I mean, I, I couldn't even, I can't even think that it would be that high. I don't really know. I don't have the answers on that. But what I, what I would like to add to this meeting is that I, I know that everyone's concerned and upset about a lot of things in town. But I do have to say that uh, Jamie Cosgrove did do something for the housing authority. He didn't renew Doug Dennis's position. I mean, you know, I mean, that's the reason why I was able to have that room to come on. So, you, you know, I know that we have to consider the things ahead of us. So we still have a lot of work to do. But we also have to think about the whole picture of what is behind us, too. I mean, there's some things that are very difficult, I'm sure, as a, as a, as a first electman to navigate around because you got a million people like pigeons around you tugging at you, I'm sure. I wouldn't want the position myself because I couldn't handle it. But for a, for a community as a whole, you, you, I mean, we still have to work with each other and get behind the first electman, in my opinion, because I, it seems like a lot of times it, it turns into a bashing thing. And that's not what my, I don't like to see that going on because that represents who we all are. And, you know, so I think that some things Jamie was, is able to do and some things it takes time to navigate around things. It, as far as my experience on the housing authority, yeah, we absolutely do have some bad players on board that should be removed. You know, so I know, I know that there's a, a process or a formality in order to get to that point. I don't know how long it takes. You know, I mean, I, to be honest with you, because of my huge disappointment with the housing authority, I, I was ready to resign because I don't see any change. It's very difficult to make these changes because it's hard to make everything right. Uh, but I'm doing the best I can. And, and as Jerry is, I, I think that the person that just came on the housing authority has not had enough communication or information to even be in a, put in a position to vote on anything for at least six months to a year until they get familiar with what's going on and the whole picture. There are a lot of unanswered questions, but you know the, the first selectman has got. I'm sure he's got his hands full with a lot of different things going on, and this is one part of a small part of the one percent of maybe the, of of what he has to do every day. And it's so I know that me as a property manager, I know that just being pulled in a thousand directions every day on my end with only property management and nothing else, it's 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 huge. I'm in my office 14 hours a day, so I I, I know and I, I it's good that you guys are expressing the concern. Uh, that something still needs to be done, and maybe you feel like nothing's being done. Sometimes I feel the same way, but you, you can't miss the, the fact that things have already been done. You know, that he has had, he, you know, I mean, Jamie has made some changes. And I think that it's, it's a work in progress. And I think we really need to get behind each other and have better communications. Even myself, I need to be a better communicator with the housing authority members. I'm, I'm not for or against the, the redevelopment project. I'm just, I just want to do the right thing for the residents. To me, that's what's important is the elderly people that's there, that are existing uh, residents there. Unfortunately, in my opinion, my experience, I don't think all the board members are the same, or feel the same way. I think they have one direction to go in, and they're not considering other people or the residents from our own community. And it's a shame. The same, the same respect I've heard is thrown up several times with this Brantford Affordable Housing LLC that was um, registered in the uh, town of Bradford, which somehow is my understanding that's affiliated with the money or the funding from the federal government for this redevelopment project, which I would also like to find out more about. But I just, I just wanted people to realize I'm not here to like to bash anybody. And so I really would like people to be a little bit more positive myself, you know, about, about supporting our own community. We're, we are all a part of this whole thing. And, you know, I don't agree with a, a lot of things. But also, I don't know what it's like to be in those positions. But as far as that letter that Todd Petrowski wrote, uh, read, I mean, if anybody knows the chairperson on BHA, you clearly would know that she didn't write that letter. It probably came from the Yale Law School, which is very unfair to write a letter like that and send it to another commissioner. That's all. I, that's all. I, I'm, I'm done, Jean. Thank you for your. All right. All right. Is there anyone yeah, I'd like to speak? Anything from the board? All right. All right, we'll go one more time around. I'll give one. Go ahead, Ms. Wachowski. Hi, I just wanted to um, 
say when you had said about they have to get along, try to get along. Well, it's difficult. You know, you know, even in sports, in any in any way, any job, it's difficult if you have people that are going to run the board the way they want. And what I have personally seen, you can't work with that. And I know I have I've been president and sergeant at arms of of um, different um, organizations. I was executive assistant for an international company for 30 years. So I know how to get around things and I know how to work with people. And I sent an email saying that I would like to be considered to go on to the board for BHA. And I never received a response back. And I personally think until you, like they said, get rid of one at a time, you have two bad apples in the bunch. And if you don't start to get rid of them, you know, like Mark said, he was ready to uh, resign already. The other lady already resigned. You're never going to change the people on the board, especially now if they're always going to vote three against two. So I just wanted to put it out there that um, I know beside myself, there are other people that are willing and able and um, intelligent and capable of being on that board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John Hartwell. Hi, uh, this is John Harwell. I'd like to come back to the four and a half million dollar number. Uh, it's my understanding that the Markham re uh, review was done in January of 2019. That's two years ago, obviously. And at that time, there was nothing found that was out of line with the financial records of the BHA. Uh, it seems like that we could at least put this one issue to bed. And I, I, I do not understand why. When there have been multiple opportunities since that time for that uh, that finding to be uh, properly promoted and exposed and talked about and understood and and actually accepted as a fact that there is nothing uh, there is no gross impropriety on the financial side of the BHA. I mean, the rest of these issues are very complex, but that one seems pretty simple. And I don't understand why in that time, the last two years, that this issue hasn't been put to bed. And what can you do, Selectman Cosgrove, to actually finish that, that one piece up um, and, and let us move on from that point? Okay. As, as I said earlier, um, <clears throat> the four and a half million is, is something new uh, that... <laughs> just kind of came out of uh, in recent months. Um, I have stated that uh, in, in response to the previous petition that was done and the work that we had Markham do in reviewing um, that they, they, their determination was, or their findings was that there was nothing that warranted um, a further, further uh, audit or review. They felt that everything was lined. They reviewed the audits that were submitted to the state the bank statements that were provided and uh, their, uh, how they were tracking their records. Okay. Is it Representative Sires? Thank you, uh, Representative Cosgrove, uh, Representative Sires. Uh, the, let's go back in 2016, the request for financials was a seven year look back. And that was doing a four-year request. So the financial documents were requested under the old property manager from 2010 till date. They, that still has not been satisfied. That is where the guts of the problem came. The LITC program came as a result of poor funding and lack of funding during that period. So I don't believe that anything has been satisfied. I would assume that in the past two years, somebody would clean up their act when they have been asked to produce financial documents back to 2010. So that's where um, in 2016, there was a five-year look back requested and that has not been satisfied. There were three bank accounts. We asked for invoices. Nothing has been satisfied. Please don't. Sweep that under the rug because in the last two years, I would assume somebody would have cleaned up their act when they have been asked for documents going back to 2010. And you do all know that this project of redevelopment did not happen in the last two years. Uh, Carolyn, can you unmute? I'm sorry, your phone's. Go ahead. 
No, no problem. So that is where we need to we need to address going back that far. It, you just you just didn't run out of money suddenly, and that is why I have just two questions in listening to this, and I and, and one is to Mr. Petrosky's letter. If in fact a housing authority is in default of a million dollars and doesn't ha- have it, um, Jamie, would that fall on the town since uh, the town holds the funding whenever there's any grants or money? So would the taxpayers be responsible for that million dollars? That That's one. And has um, the Brantford Affordable Housing Inc. I find that you can tell that the housing authority is rudderless if a commissioner of over a year has no idea what the Brantford Affordable Housing Inc. is, and it is a critical part to going forward with this program. That is that is very sad, but more important, very scary. And I do want the housing authority to let everyone know, the public, since it's a public entity, what is Brantford Housing Authority Inc.? How does that fall into, as um, somebody had just said, that that is where the funding source is, who are on the board of that? Because the last meeting I went, I was told that the treasurer's sister and her sister's friend were put on the board of Brantford Affordable Housing, Inc., and I can't find any votes by anybody on the board that allowed that to happen. So that does need to be discovered because um, – um, Commissioner Colello, you were on the board when that happened and sitting at that meeting, so that you do have to find out. This is an example of I've attend almost all meetings that the town of Brantford has to help improve my knowledge of how government works. And I will say the housing authority has got to either clean up, get a new housing authority that starts off on the same page because it is animosity and fighting between the commissioners because two sides don't want the other side to know what's going on. And here's a good example. So I, I think everybody needs to know what this affordable housing authority is and where it's going and what is the funding source and how does it work? My other last question um, for Selectman is if this project does go through, do you, does Brantford even need a housing authority because it was funded and founded in 1974 for low-income Brantford residents, seniors, seniors? And if this goes through and it changes to be family housing, does that even change the structure of, of having a Brantford housing authority? And that is just something I'm just curious how that works and the town would be responsible since the since the Board of Selectmen would hire or fire the commissioners and has that been even approached about where 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 are we going with the Brantford Housing Authority, which was for the low income Brantford seniors. So a lot of questions that I have from this meeting. It was a great spirited meeting. I hope nobody's targeted anybody. These are good questions and they need to be answered. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I think just to quickly answer your questions regarding um, the the default, no, uh, the, the, I think you're referring to uh, when they there was a steep grant um, or a small cities grant where the the town acts as essentially the fiduciary for those funds because that's what's necessary for those uh, those those grant applications. Um, but other than that, as you said, uh, as you know. I know you know, but the housing authority is a separate entity. Um, a lot of it is really governed by it is all oh, housing authorities are are uh, governed really by state statute. Um, the the town they're not a town department. You know, they're not a they're not other than the board of selectmen making the appointments or for neglect duty. There's a process where the appointing body can remove members, uh, but um, I, and as far as your other comment, uh, I think asking about really, you know, the structure of the housing authority and how it operates, um, I think that's something that I agree perhaps isn't so widely understood throughout the community. And perhaps um, having some kind of uh, presentation uh, would, would help clear up a lot of those misunderstandings. Um, and that's something we can consider in the future. Um, 
you know, I, I got the we've we've on this for a long time. Uh, I see the other selectmen. I don't know if we want to uh, continue this discussion uh, at a later date. I know we have other agenda items on. Uh, I don't see anybody new that would like to, to I, speak I, at this point. Uh, I, uh, in all honesty, I just assume we 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 get this completed. Um, with the most information that we can have if, if it, it, you know i don't care how long it takes and and i just speak for myself on that but i know that representative jackson has his hand up i don't think he's spoken um yet yeah, i just noticed that I'll, I'll thanks i just want to see uh what the sense of the board was uh i think if we're gonna go ahead select woman higgins uh, I don't mind uh, addressing this, uh, but I think there is uh, a lot of questions to be answered. I, um, I There's an awful lot of information that's been put forward. I don't know if it's all fact, and it's important for us to uh, make sure we're on solid ground and do the right thing for, for this, not only the Parkside seniors, but for, just in general for, for the Brantford community. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about is, are, are we mixing apples and oranges? Are we only to appoint and or, unfortunately, at some point, remove members of this housing commission, but we have no other oversight with regards to something like the park site? Is that all state? Would the state then be, mandate the audits? I, I, there's so much in my head. I don't know where to start, you know? The, the, the appointing body does have, I believe under statute, and I can get further clarification, but I believe my reading was the appointing body, if we can subpoena um, certain, uh, you know, can, can subpoena the records. Okay. I believe that's under state statute. But as far as, you know, the, the over, there's a difference which I think that needs to be recognized between oversight and control of the decision making that is happening at yeah. the author housing authority or within the housing authority. Now, our, our our body does not play a role in the decisions that the housing authority makes, yeah. or even the appointment of the chair. That happens by the members. That is very clearly defined in statute. Um, all right, I will get to. Uh, we had one other person who hadn't spoke. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Right. You gotta unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Selectman Cosgrove, I'm uh, I'm pretty bewildered here, uh, and I I almost don't know where to start. I did I do start with a question, but um, we have we have a a housing authority which has been placed in a very dysfunctional position by the appointments that you have made to it. Um, what I mean by that is that there was a project that was going to be done to ameliorate a very bad housing situation um, where we have a, a place that can't be restored well without being made new and we lose the commissioners who are who are shepherding that um task and we get a couple of new commissioners appointed by you um that that sandbag everything that they're trying to do now um i don't want to get too far afield here and and i don't want to make any wild accusations um but <laughs> on the one hand, you have something that needs to be either fixed up perfectly or which can't be done or ma made new. And in order to make it new, we have to get funding from Chaffa. And um, what I see is the real problem here is one of leadership. And I would like to have to know your particular position on Parkside One. In the last four years, the town has spent close to $200,000 in taxpayer money and in legal fees, fighting court battles against the construction of Parkside One. And the town continues to spend 
taxpayer money on losing court battles, including the latest appeal. Is this not a clear indication that you particularly oppose this project? And that's a question. Okay, is that your question? Yeah, that's my question. Okay, I'd be more than happy to answer that. Uh, I, I think the decisions to uh, uh, to appeal were made by uh, a, another body, uh, and the, the along the way, um, uh, you know, and that's still. I won't get into the specifics because I know that's still uh, that may be going back to court. But I think you also asked first of all. You 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 said I am the one that's fault. I've been uh, by putting members on that are there to sandbag the project. Well, you just heard from one of the members, and I think there's other member who would like to speak, who essentially said they don't have any of the votes. They don't have enough votes. So what are they sandbagging? Okay. Uh, so I think I put members on there, and you can ask each member that I have appointed. I asked them and I met with each one before I met and I said, I want people on there who can, uh, you know, act, who can listen to the information and make the right and the best decisions for, for the community and the, in particular the residents that are being served. And as I said prior, when I've been clear in my position with uh, my concern about the residents, when you go, and this isn't just with this project, this is the problem with the, the current funding that exists. And by the way, this isn't the only funding that exists for, to, to make the repairs in the, that we need to for, for affordable housing, okay? But when you elect to go from a, a, the current model that we have to go into a tiered income structure, you are essentially going from 50 units 50 units that are currently, yes, maybe they need to be repaired and there's some maintenance that deferred maintenance that shouldn't have occurred and that needs to be addressed. And I asked the commission members to look at, at ways of addressing that. But you're taking 50 units that are currently serving the most vulnerable population that we have here in town. When this project is completed and it transfers to a fully tiered system, you are going from 50 units down to probably six or seven units that will serve that most vulnerable population that we have in Brantford. So I ask, where's the humanity in that? Where's the humanity in that project? That's where I stand, okay? And this has been voiced publicly. This has been voiced to the former chairman of the, the housing authority. This has been for, voiced to the, 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 the uh, entire uh, current board. OK, that's what we have. We are not. Housing issue. Here. This isn't in, in addition to what we have. This is taking 50 units that are currently serving those and reducing that down for what? Yes, we're saying we're expanding it. We're addressing deferred maintenance and we're expanding it by uh, 15 to 17 units, whatever it may be. But the reality is the reality is. And this is the issue with what's the current current funding that is being utilized is that you, it's going to the detriment. And quite honestly, yeah, I spoke to others in town who serve serve the most vulnerable population here in town, and they had concerns. And in fact, one had this would actually statement was to me this would actually, in their estimation, actually increase potentially the homeless population that we have in Brantford. What is really the issue is the rental assistance program that the state has frozen a number of years ago. That's what we should be advocating for. Get that reinstated so we can get uh, the subsidy in there so we can continue to maintain the, the, uh, the building and uh, hold it to a livable standard. With that, I saw, I think I have one more commission member that would like to speak. I asked uh, Jerry Mastrangelo, like to unmute yourself. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening. And as a new board member, and, and first of all, Jamie, um, I, I do take offense to um, the past uh, speaker talking about sandbagging a project because 
I don't think I got personally involved um, in in being a part of the committee to sandbag anything. Um, I'm still learning about the the history of the project, and um, you know, I just like to make a few comments. First of all, how surprised I was in terms of um, the lack of working together as a board, and and it has nothing to do with having different opinions. I think the biggest problem, and I only been on the board for the last two or three months, but there just seems to be backdoor deals, people mm-hmm. not communicating, um, decisions getting made um, amongst a few of the board members. I, I know myself and, and I do communicate uh, with Mark and I'll ask him, gee, did you know about, uh, about this or that? And, you know, he had a lot, just many things that we're unaware of. Um, so, you know, I got on the board also because I do have some concerns about the senior citizens. And I think, I think it, when, when these people are going to be displaced and, and there's no, nowhere else to go, I, that's what we should be thinking about. And as far as those units of con- concerns, I saw those units. And it's like anything else. If you don't take care of property, which that property has been poorly maintained, there hasn't been enough money put into that project, you know, despite supposedly uh, getting federal aid, then, you know, you're in a position where you do have to do one of two things. And the answer may not be just turn it over, displace all these uh, seniors. I think the answer is that these units can be fixed up as long as there's the amount of money to put into it. And, um, you know, I was very surprised. One other thing about the response, you know, about that letter that uh, what was read. And, uh, you know, when I met with you, Jamie, one of the things that you made very clear to me was that there needs to be transparency on this board. And I just see, you know, from being on the board from two or three months, uh, we're not working together and there's very little transparency. And, um, you know, I, I just hope that that can change because, again, um, we're doing this for, as as you have said, a, new, a number of times, the most vulnerable citizens in, 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 in our town. And I think we have to continue to remind everybody um, what is our responsibility, what our oath and you know, we are there to help these people. And, and, and recently, there's just been way too many uh, issues between the, uh, uh, the, the, the elevator issues and all this. So, um, Jamie, I just want to say thank you, because I do believe that you do have the citizens' best interest at heart. And, you know, hopefully we could clean up this board and, um, again, help continue to help the, uh, the seniors remain there. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for serving. Yeah. Uh, Adam White. Adam White, would you like to speak? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Jamie, thank you. Uh, that's me, Andy White. Oh, Andy. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, it's, it's hard to know where to begin because a lot of things have been said tonight that show that we really seriously have some difficulties in our board structures. Um, and I'm concerned about what. Well, I I actually want to thank you for explaining that you as the board have the authority to appoint commission members and to remove them if necessary. And now we have lots of things out here where people are alleging that there are reasons for people to be removed. But we have had it revealed that two recent members of the board have, in fact, not cooperated with the board and have gone behind the board's back to a funding agency to protest the funding grant that was in front of that board. I don't know if there's a clearer case of either naivete or deliberate breach of financial responsibility. If, as a board of selectmen, you appointed and you have the right to, to remove for cause, you feel there's cause in the situation. Thank you. Is anyone new? 
Uh, Jay, Jay Pottinger. Thank you for selectman. Um, as Andy said, there's been a lot said tonight, and it's very hard in three minutes to refute the big lies which have been spread um, in this meeting and around the town for many months. There is no missing $4.5 million. I'll repeat that. There is no missing $4.5 million. As the first selectman knows, at his request, all the audits and all the statements to the state, to the funding authority, were reviewed at his request independently by Markham, and they found no problems, no exceptions, nothing missing. It is a big lie to say there is $4.5 million missing. It is also a big lie to say that the seniors are being kicked out of Parkside One as a result of this project. In fact, there is in writing a guarantee that every single senior who is there will stay in Parkside when it is rebuilt. That is part, it is a required part of the application to the state for funding. The rumors and the lies that are being spread and the fear that is being generated among the people who live there is unconscionable. And that's a tactic being used by the people who are trying to stop this project. They are scaring the people they claim they care about. They are frightening the people they claim they support. There is a written guarantee that every single senior living there will be kept at Parkside when the project is rebuilt. And those who are saying that are spreading the big lie. There are many other lies. Who are affordable housing project. And I do not want to waste everyone's time at, at we've already been here an hour and a half but i agree with those who say there needs to be better communication by the brantford housing authority and within the brantford housing authority unfortunately mr colello whose hand is up was fully briefed about all of this before when he first joined the board he received a briefing book prepared by my office and my law firm and at yale law school in the clinic and the students, it explained Brantford affordable housing, it explained how the projects work, it explained the low income housing tax credit funding. I assume he read it and I am sure he's smart enough to have understood it. And so I'm shocked to hear him say he never heard of Brantford affordable housing and doesn't know what it is. I will take one minute to explain that so that he can know that. I am not a total liar. Mr. Colello, but okay, okay. Um, can I finish one thing on Brantford affordable housing, Mr. Yes. Cosgrove, since yes. that's been repeated several times? Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. Brantford affordable housing is a not for profit company that is set up as part of a low income housing tax credit application. If you receive low income housing tax credits to rebuild a project, which is what this proposal is and what it has been since the beginning, then you need a nonprofit entity through which the low income housing tax credit funds are passed and used to develop the project and which shares ownership of the project with the investors who buy the low income housing tax credits, which are used to pay for the construction. That is what BAH is. It is a pass through entity which is completely standard in every low-income housing tax credit application with which i'm familiar and which i am sure other lawyers who do this kind of work would agree there is nothing sinister about it there is nothing secret about it it is a pass-through entity to facilitate the funding through low-income housing tax credits um i don't want to take more time, but I, those are three big lies that need to be called out right here and right now. Thank you. 
Okay, the, the one thing I just want to provide some further clarification, which you, um, I believe, referred to as a, a lie, is <clears throat> the fact re regarding the current residents that are there and the population that's the, the, the people who are being served will continue to be served. However, when we make decisions as a community, we, we are not making it based on the individuals, we're making it on the, the community as a whole, the community in the future, and who we want to continue to serve. My issue with going from the current structure that we have to a tiered income level is the opportunity that was afforded to, and available, and we were able to utilize for residents uh, that, you know, in the lowest income bracket will not exist at the current level it does now. This is not an expansion of affordable housing for the most vulnerable. It is going to go, as I stated, for those who are under the 25% of the median income in the town of Brantford, it was stated that it would be approximately 10% of the units would be eligible for those. So where you may have an agreement with the current residents, how about the resident who's gonna need it next year, down two years or five years from now. We want to be sure that that we still have opportunities for people to stay in Brantford or, or to continue to live. Okay. All right. Is there? Um, we have a number of hands up. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Cook. A couple of things. First of all, to uh, Commissioner Colello and his remark that somehow, you know, the first selectman has so much on his plate that he can't be held accountable for certain things or something to that effect, uh, you know, whatever you said. All right, I'm the guy that for six months put town hall corrupt signs everywhere, okay? And, and let me tell you something about that, just 30 seconds or less. Everybody was angry about the sign. Why? Because it was a bad reflection of the town. Well, I'm sorry about that. They were mad about where the signs went, how many there were, you know, on what properties they were, state versus town. But you know what no one ever did once? Once. They never, they never said the signs were wrong. Why? Because the signs weren't wrong. And I'm not wrong right now when I say there's something seriously wrong with this town and specifically something is seriously wrong with this housing authority. All I want to know right now, the project aside, because I don't know much about Parkside 1, 2, and all that. What I would like to know is to uh, Mr. Uh, oh, excuse me, Hartwell's point, where is the four and a half million? Is it just made up that it never really disappeared and you have to go back to 2012 from what i understand you have to go back to 2012 you can't look at a 2019 audit and say everything's fine all right i would just like to know that if everything is fine great but you're the one i think that says you know to mr carello that they're not giving you the document well what about the documents all the way back to 2012 when all this supposedly happened What's called for here, and I'll close on this issue because I have other issues to talk to later on in the meeting, is a forensic audit back to 2012, and let's just put this thing, as Mr. Hartwell said, to rest. If it's all there, fine. But I'm not going to stand, you know, corrected for just asking a question. That's all I ask, just a question, where's the money? And I was shut up, you know, without even asking it at the last time I went to a housing authority meeting. Okay, hey, thanks. Casey Lowe. Hello. Just real quick, I want to say I've never been reappointed. I've been, uh, I was elected. I was joined the, the, um, the board. I was appointed. I, I became the chair by election after Doug was not reappointed. I have never been reappointed in the, in my term. Um, I want to say that the, um, the affordable housing issue is going to be very much solved. That's going to not be happy with exactly. many people in Brantford by the fact that there will be Section 8 vouchers available to people 
to Brantford residents, to people from wherever um, who are very low income that we don't have available now. There, there will be more people with very low income available to live at Parkside and um, well, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mark Hillel. I would just like to, uh, to add uh, a little rebuttal about uh, Attorney Pottinger and his legal team. Uh, first of all, perhaps it's the legal representation that is actually partially causing the division of BHA. Secondly, when they gave me the binder from the Yale Law School students up at the Stony Creek Library, I opened the binder looking for specifics, and guess what? Those pages were missing. And uh, third, <clears throat> the third comment was, um, I don't, I don't recall doing anything uh, behind anyone's back or or even calling to question anything. Um, I have not signed to anything as far as questioning anything of, with the financials. I have requested reports that, yes, obviously they have not been provided in almost a year and a half. Nothing. <clears throat> the last thing that I wanted to mention is that, um, hold on one second. What was the, what was the last accusation that, that uh, Pottinger had said regarding me? Uh, I, well, I, just I, lost I don't recall. Was I guess <laughs> I'm not. I'm not against the project. I, gotta, I mean, I don't understand what everyone thinks. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not for or against the project. I'm probably one of the most neutral people on. Yeah. You know, but it's it's important that the people that are only for the project, w with with no other intention of anything else, it's unfortunate that they won't listen with an open mind to everyone else, is input or questions or requests. Right. And and that seems and that seems to be the general consensus of what the the law students and attorney Pottinger is following, unfortunately. So yeah, and I just uh, thank you. I'll let you know. You know, if 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 building if rebuilding this, or, you know, going through this and, and demolishing the buildings is the right thing to do, and it works out, then I'm for it. If that's the right thing to do, if it's not the right thing to do. Then we should definitely repair the existing units and get these rented. I have that. This is the point that I wanted to bring up, actually, too. I have never once seen in writing any signed commitment stating that every resident existing at Parkside Village will have housing at that location once the development is done. In fact, Beacon has told me very differently. Most of the people won't qualify anymore when it becomes all ages Section 8 housing. Most of the elderly won't qualify. Um, they don't get enough subsidies to actually be in that location once they convert them all or rebuild them as uh, all ages. Um, okay. Thanks. I, I think that's that's pretty much it. I just wanted to make those points. But you know, you know now that I'm, I'm just thinking about what's what's happened in the past year and a half, I'm I'm starting to think about other things, and I think that maybe this legal representation isn't the right legal representation for BHA either. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Mastrangelo, do you have your hand up from before? Or you like to say? Uh, yeah, I just want to make two quick points. You know, what I think the Yale Law students and Attorney Pottinger should have been more concerned about than anything else was the gross mismanagement of this property for so many years. The reason why that the property, or I should say one of the reasons, is how, how many, I, if, if people knew how many units were unoccupied and were not actively trying to uh, get people in there, I mean, it, it's just amazing how mis, I, I could not have believed and uh, up until recently, you had, uh, I don't know exactly what the numbers were, but you probably had 40% of those units 
um, with, with, with no income and, and nobody caring. So, you know, again, it just seems like there was, there's been some agendas here and um, wh- why those units were not actively as they are now. And, and Beacon is now actively renting those units. Um, they weren't being rented before when all this legal stuff was going on. And in the last probably two months, you probably got six or eight units, if not more, rented. And as far as the accusation that I was protesting funding, when I spoke to, to Chaffa, that, 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 that was not true in, in any way. All I was doing was questioning the process in which it was being done without other board members uh, being privy to it. So, so for, 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 for attorney Pottinger or anybody else saying that I, I made phone, I made a phone call, uh, in reference to protesting funding, that's not true at all. That, that's just a, a misrepresentation and that needed, it needs to be clarified. So, um, that's, I just wanted to make those two points. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Real quick, getting to, getting back to that that oh, four and a half million number. Can you hear me? Yeah, you just uh, just re- reminded everyone has to state their name before speaking. Oh, it's it's Mark Colello, uh, BHA Commissioner. Getting back to the the concern about all this lost money. I mean, you probably lost more than three quarters of a million dollars alone in lost rent from leaving all those empty units in both buildings empty for how many years? Six, seven, eight years? How long has this project been? trying to get off the ground. I mean, they, they left, I think it was actually not 40%. I would like to say in, in Parkside one, it was probably 60% empty units. I mean, it was amazing how many units were empty uh, in preparation for this, this redevelopment project. So maybe, maybe that's where all the lost money went in lost rent because it, it, places were left empty for so long. I could turn that place around in three months with about $200,000 and have it fully functioning, netting it, uh, having a great net income every month. I don't understand why it's so difficult. I do it every day. I think it's just got the wrong people on the oversight. Thank you. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Nichols. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, Back to Mr. Johnson, Jackson, I'm sorry, how he attacked you. In all reality, he wanted to shut down the Short Beach Bridge, which made no sense back in the day. And on top of that, I, I fully agree with you. But to put this to bed, why don't we just do a forensic audit and be done with it? It, it makes no sense when you think about all this money missing and whatnot else and handwritten receipts and you know elevators not working and people getting stuck in them and the liability wise and safety concerns i just honestly think it's easier to say hey okay you know what we didn't we we did do a uh somewhat of a uh accounting of it but we need a forensic audit to figure out where the grant money went from the state. And at that point, we can determine, okay, well, merit properties disappeared. Why did they disappear? Why were we paying benefits for their maintenance person who was her husband? to maintain the place and the place is in shambles. Like I said before, the condos in uh, in Island View were built in 77. Should we knock them down? Should we knock a house down that was built in 1950? I mean, your grandfather's house was built before that. Should we knock that down? Like, it doesn't make sense. The maintenance was never there. So we have to follow where that money went and follow that, so to say, uh, 
chain line of money to figure out where this money went and how it was dispersed and look at bank accounts. With that, I leave it to you. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Petrowski. Yeah, I'd like to talk to this too. And I think I let's just get to the point here. The point is, you have the authority. Are you or are you not going to remove these people that the citizens' petition has went into? Fifty signatures have asked for the removal of A. Tacey Lowe and Kate Collins. And I think we need to get to that point because, I mean, Attorney Pottinger can say what he wants. And you know what? Remember, Selectman Cosgrove, he called you a liar during the during the last uh, uh, Melrose access and how you did this. And you, that. let's just let's just be honest here. Are you or are you not going to remove these people? That's what the citizen petition is asking. You have 50 plus signatures from all seven districts asking for the removal of these commissioners. Are you or are you not going to do it? And I think that's the question. Mr. We have presented we have presented enough evidence to prove that there's people stuck in elevators, the places in shambles. They have not done their due diligence. The place is a dump. And I think you have, and you do have the authority because I believe Mr. Pottinger is on the call and his law school is very prestigious, you know, Yale Law School. Uh, you've and said this. Yeah. I don't need your interruption. And either make a decision or, or let it go. I mean, what are you going to do? That's what the citizen petition is asking for. Are you going to remove these people and are you going to do a forensic audit? Let's cut the BS and let's get to the point. Yeah, so just to clarify, as I read, the petition that was said, that there was not the petition that was submitted to the NC. Okay. The petition was a, as I, I read the language at the beginning of the, the meeting. It was to look at the, the conditions of the building. Didn't request okay. now the issue that I see with that is your discussion right now. If you were to say remove a, a member or one or two members because of the condition of the housing complex, well, you have a five member board that existed over time. Uh, and there's been a change in, in uh, so to say it's one member, that's where you run into an issue. Okay. okay, well, let me ask you this question. The board then. should be acting, uh, and there, no one should be acting unilaterally, and that's where I've stated, as I will go back once again, and I have submitted uh, letters to the full board, the uh, housing authority, that they need to act as a commission. Nobody can act unilaterally. Okay? Well, let me ask you this question uh, first, Lepin. Um If you have the authority, because you have... Uh, you have appointed Mark Mark Colello, and you've appointed Jerry Mastrangelo, and you've appointed Victoria Verderame, and you have renewed Kate Collins, and you've renewed Tacey Lowe. Do you think that you have the authority to just remove people if they're in the wrongdoing? I mean, how much more evidence do we have to prove to you that there's that they're incompetent? I mean, how much more? I mean, how much more evidence do you need? I mean, do your job. I mean, do your due diligence. You have 50 signatures from all seven districts of your voting community that want this to happen, and you're still being insubordinate about it. <laughs> How much more do we have to do here? Okay. Either, either come to the plate, and this is right. This is right. Ask you. Either come to the plate and say, you know what, I'm going against the citizens, and I'm not going to remove these people, and I'm going to allow for senior house for seniors to lose their housing and I'm also going to allow for us to lose our ball field parking which is going to happen and I don't care or you're going to take the bull by the horns and tackle this head on and say you know what I'm going to remove these people and we're going to get a decent commission in there to do what's right by the people of the town of Brantford so what do you want to do what do you want to do tell me I mean I think that's an honest question 
Yeah, well, let's let's address that with your, your statement, okay? For the, for for the benefit of the people who are on this call, the other selectmen, as well as people who may be watching, okay? As I'll read it one more time, it says in the, the petition that was submitted to the RTM, which was then sent to the Board of Selectmen, an examination of past and present living conditions at Parkside Village Housing Complex and its oversight of the Brantford Housing Authority, right? It's speaking of the entire authority. And to your comments, and you want to, you know, if we're going to speak, uh, I, I, ask, I ask that we, you know, stick to the facts, okay? You, you, you're representing that. I, I think I was very clear in where I stood with my support for the, for the, the seniors and for the, 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 the people who then are Why being, haven't you done anything? Please so, interrupt, sir. Please. I, I, and again, that has been, I think, um, as far as the appointments, yes, we've made appointments. I don't, I think Ms. Lowe has not been reappointed since her initial appointment. But the, your statement regarding we're going to lose ball field parking, well, actually, no, it will not lose ball field parking. Um, as I stated before, what was before the RTM uh, several years ago was to address, quite honestly, the, to ensure that we protected the ball field, but also were able to, at the time, we were looking at, is there a way to ensure that we can because currently there was a. Uh, let me ask you a question. Did you ensure that in writing? Please let me finish. All right, I let you speak. Let me finish. Because you're just lying. You know, this, oh, it's, please it's, mute him. By the record, okay. Is there any? So, uh, Jamie, right. if this is this more of a personnel issue type thing for the uh, for the commission, where seeing the poll board would have to act on any course. That, that we could set up, and, and we may not be able to, that's what I'm asking, that we could set up the board um, an executive session because it's a personnel type matter to sort out a, a direction because what we have is both sides or two sides or three sides with accusations on a board that's, that's not functioning. W would that be possible that we can have a meeting amongst ourselves because it's a personnel type thing? We'd have to report, you know, the, the, no action can be taken, but we could certainly come up with an action if needed, um, because there's been a lot of information that came out tonight, both sides, right, wrong. The only thing that we pretty much know for sure is that I, I think everyone's in agreement that the board's not acting as a cohesive unit, and, and, and we may have to take action. Is that something we can do, or is it not? And, and I'm asking because I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and I, my my... My feeling is that we cannot go into executive session. I don't believe this okay. is personnel. This is a, a these are appointed members of a commission that we appoint, but they don't. Okay. As I said, it's not not a per, I don't see it as a personnel matter. But I agree. I think the, the main issue here is you know the board needs to begin to um, perhaps work together uh, better, Correct. which has been recognized. Uh, by by the boards uh, members themselves. So, uh, listen, I understand so, your I understand, so, but so, why are you letting this happen? You so, know what's wrong. You look I, at the look at the evidence, Jamie. Come on, uh, let's not let's not be dumb here. Look at the evidence. Yeah. So well, my comment, Todd, would be that you know obviously this board can can meet um, at a meeting and and as a board. And, and, and I'll be honest, there's been a lot of stuff to absorb tonight all the way around. I think you'll agree with that. But that the board meets and then we send the message as a board, not as Jamie Cosgrove, Ray Dunbar, you know, Miss Higgins. It, it, we send the message. But I, I think I, I think we need to meet as a board another night and 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 then and then we send the message. You know, you call a shot across the bow, whatever you want to do it. And they either step up as a unit or they don't. Um, and, and I think that message has to has to come from the entire board. And I'd be more than happy to do that as a board member. Once once we can, you know, Representative, this and put Dunbar, it all together. 
Representative Dunbar, I agree with you 10,000%. And thank you for saying that. And I agree with you. I think that's the way it should be handled. And you are the only voice of reason that we have. And thank you very much. Well, there's, I appreciate there's other that. voices of reason, but sometimes it just gets cloudy with everything that comes at us. But thank you. Um, but I don't think it's going to get settled tonight, in all honesty. There's just too much to, to really absorb because a lot was said. Um, and you know and, what? And you know what? Fact you know fiction will have to figure that out. I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. But maybe let's just put this to another thing where we could deal with it. Because, I mean, obviously, we have a lot of problems. You have Yale Law involved, you have citizens involved. You have citizens involved who are losing their houses. We have town property that's going to be lost. And all this is going on, and no one wants to deal with it. And I, I, I appreciate the fact that you wanted to do this, and thank you. That's all I can say. Thank you. All right. Ms. Wachowski. On mute. Okay, here I go. I just wanted to um, end with this that um, Casey Lowe had said, and you just said that um, she wasn't hasn't been reappointed yet, which I didn't realize that. But at the last meeting, Kate nominates her for chairwoman. She nominates Kate for treasurer. And like I said before, the third woman who's new and really has no knowledge of anything yet just votes with them. So as far as the committee being able to work cohesively and together. It's never going to happen if Jerry and Mark don't ever get a chance to be an officer on the board. So with five members, you have three voting against two. And that's how the vote on everything that was voted on. That's how it went. Three against two, three against two. So those yeah. two guys don't stand a chance unless there's a change being made. Like on any board, there would be whether it be in an organization, whether it be on a sports team whether it be in a neighborhood watch group if you know you have people that aren't going to work cohesively you have to get rid of those people not the people that are trying so thank you and um you know every every commissioner vote is an equal vote so I think that's important to recognize that where they may have nominated a chairman and a, a vice chairman, but but as I stated before, the there's not one member that uh, can act unilaterally. It requires the the vote of the authority. So when we start to question the the, the maintenance or or other issues that have been going on, you have to really parse out what, and you're looking for the removal of an individual. You have to ask question, was that an act of an individual or was that the act of the authority? Now, I, I know, you know, there seems to be a split within the authority and there's, it seems to be uh, continuing from what I'm hearing, um, some, some divide among the members. But as us as the appointing body, when evaluating decisions that were made, we have to look at those decisions as were they made as an authority or was an individual do something that neglected their duty and had they, and that's what we have to evaluate. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Carolyn Sires. Unmute yourself. Thank you, uh, First Selectman Cosgrove, Representative Sires. I have a question, and I hope this could get clarified, and it does uh, go back to what uh, the First Selectman stated. With this rebuild, should it happen, there are going to be one and two bedroom units. So the two bedroom units will not allow a single person in it. It has to be two or four or more, and it's for families. And the one bedroom unit, uh, according to what I read in the FOIA documents, have to be for two or more. So how is it that 50 single seniors, because right now they're one per unit, 
who are going to be displaced till it rebuilds are going to be allowed back into a new development that has two bedrooms when according to what the Chaffa email stated, no two bedroom under a new, uh, under this funding, a single person cannot move into a two bedroom. And if they are in it, they have to sign a paper that states if a family wants to move in, they will have to move out. And that is all in all email form and there are no exceptions. So how can we guarantee, again, let's go back to why we're here is uh, beside the finance taking care of our, our seniors, how are we going to guarantee 50 seniors who live in single units to go back? If the, I don't, I simple math, I don't see how that would even be possible. And I'd like to see that paper documenting that all 50 people are going to be allowed to go back. Are they going to requalify because it will no longer be senior housing for low income Brantford seniors? It will now be a different type of housing. So I assume they're going to have to go through a qualification process all over and they won't qualify for a two bedroom unit. And if you go ask these single seniors who live in these single units, if they want to live in a double unit with families, their answer is going to be no. So I think that when we, we get together, or the, the Board of Selectmen gets together and the Housing Authority gets together, you have to parse through the wording of these documents because what you read is probably different than what we're told. And I just really, uh, First Selectman has stated it clearly. There was an article in the paper, I believe it was back in 2017 or 2018, which pointed out that only seven units after the redevelopment would be available to qualify for the type of seniors that is in that unit right now. So when they say that they're going to go back in there, I like to see how that's going to happen in writing and that would make me more comfortable to know that you are going to allow a single person in a two bedroom unit when chapel will not allow it if you get federal funding. Selectman Cosby. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. I, I just it, wanna, I, um, I, I, as much as I can appreciate some of these questions, really they need to be forwarded to the, the, the you know, to the board and, and, and not here. And, and I think, we're sending a message that the board needs to answer these questions um, because they can keep coming up tonight and really we're not the board to solve it. Yeah. Certainly I, I just want to add uh, quickly, I follow up quickly on Representative Sires. As I stated, to be clear, am I, even if there was an agreement in place, which I think uh, the attorney had represented with the current residents, I think we as a community uh, should be looking out, you know, long term. What's in the best interest, and if those same opportunities won't won't exist in the future for the most vulnerable population, then uh, I think that's something we should all be concerned about. Uh, Select woman Higgins, I believe you did. You raise yeah, I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to. That's okay. Uh, the bottom line is, let's not uh, waste any more time. It's been a long night, but I just want to say that I, I'm in total agreement with everything that uh, Selectman Dunbar had to say. I was going to suggest something similar, uh, and I'm certainly in agreement that this board has only so much oversight. There's only so much we can do, and we have to refer it to the proper commission. But we should be aware of what's going on, and maybe We'll talk about it at a future date. Maybe we can encourage this, um, uh, the members of the, the housing authority to um, come together and be at least uh, listen to each other and, and try to come to some, some kind of solution. But I certainly agree with uh, totally, 100% with yeah. uh, Selectman Dunbar. And I thank you for your time. Hey, um, I see uh, Casey Lowe. Hi, yes, thank you very much, Jamie. I just want to say that um, there's a couple things. First of all, Mark Colello doesn't even read the minutes. He says he's too busy. I'm happy to meet with any commissioner, um, any uh, selectmen. I'd happy be happy to talk to them about what's going on with the commission. Um, there are many emails I sent to Mark. He doesn't respond to what I have. I have 
tons of records of the emails I sent to Mark. He says, I don't communicate. I communicate. He doesn't respond time and time again. I would love to have a more functioning board. I, I, I've joined the um, commission of, of, of uh, Brantford Housing Authority to make the housing better for the people living at Parkside as a first priority. As a second priority, I'd love to see more affordable housing in Brantford. I'm totally committed to that. I do think that we have a path to making Parkside one, a really wonderful place to live through Beacon, through the through a tax credit plan that has no um, effect on Brantford residents. There's no cost to Brantford residents. It's a federal tax credit that has no cost to anyone in Brantford. We want to improve the lives of people at Parkside. We have a plan. We're really close. All we have to do is get through the next phase of this funding approval, and we can make Parkside One a wonderful place for the current and future residents of Brantford in Parkside One. And I'm I'm really proud to be working and 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 uh, advocating for the folks at Parkside One. I'm so sorry that people put me down as somebody who's only interested in something other than I'm not. I'm an advocate and I, I, my professional life and my volunteer life both is advocating for people who are uh, disadvantaged and um, potentially elderly or disabled. And I will continue to fight for their, for their betterment. And I will, um, I will, I will go down, I will go down, <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I, I I can't defend myself enough against all the lies and hatred that's been spread about me. But I really, I think many of the people at Parkside appreciate who I am and what I've done. And I think, Jamie, even you know that I'm committed to this project and not to the project, but the project as a, as a uh, advancement for the people at Parkside to have a better place to live. And I thank you for hearing me out. Okay. Um Go ahead, uh, Mark. Mark Colello of Brantford Housing. Um, first of all, if that was her intention, she would have clear transparency throughout my time that I've been on this board. There hasn't been any. I've been, what's being sent over to me never makes any sense. There's either missing pieces or there's 100 pages of stuff that doesn't even add up. Okay. Questions would be answered. There'd be full transparency. There wouldn't seem to be people positioned to be in a position, uh, you know, of, of being elected to, just to get the vote uh, that's needed. Um, the, the, the way that the conversations go, if it was actually for the people, there wouldn't only be one, one direction like this with all they're concerned about is getting the project going forward and getting the funding. That's all that matters. We would be able to have housing authority meetings without her secondary voice, Jay Pottinger, to attend every housing authority meeting. Why do we have to have all these outside entities for the commissioners to talk to each other? We don't communicate. We don't communicate with each other. We can't even ask a question because Jay Pottinger jumps down your throat with legal uh, technicalities or sections that we're obviously unaware of, which doesn't impress me, yay or not. Uh, it's very unfair. And then you got, you got Beacon, which I, you know, I happen to like John Elliott, and I like working with the guy from Beacon. He's actually a very reasonable person. Uh, I, I worked with him and, and uh, Jerry Mastrangelo and, his, and uh, John's partner there at Beacon. They're great guys. I mean, we've had a really good experience, I think, overall working with these guys. But, however, we get more answers out of, out of the guys from Beacon than we do from our, from our own commissioners with each other. You know, and every time you do ask a question, if you know, you're either shut down, they don't want to talk about it, or they move on to the next thing. It's a shame. So don't tell me that you're actually on this board for the people because I don't believe it for a minute. You, you have one direction, and that's what your direction is. You, you're concerned about getting the funding. You want to get the project going. I mean, I, I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing for the people now that have been living there for the past seven years in squalor? You haven't done a thing. And, and, so, and to talk about the budgets, we went over the budget the other night with, with uh, Beacon, and it was actually a really good experience that Jerry and I had. <clears throat> the person who oversees the, the budgets in the previous years, there was misallocated money ridiculously that they short-funded. For example, the electricity cost alone was shorted by over $20,000 in a calendar year. And that person is still the treasurer on the board? 
It's disgusting. Okay. So I do this every day and I'm not saying that I know everything because I don't, but don't tell me what your intentions are when you display something different. Sorry, my Mark, you got muted. Sorry. Go ahead. When I'm being told something and then you see the results of something else, which is clearly not what their, what their intention is. It's, it's disgusting. Yes, it is. Okay. I would like to see the board of commissioners to have a real meeting with each other without all these outside elements jumping into jumping into conversations that we can never get clear transparent answers i would like to have communications with beacon for the for the past year and a half i must have spoke to john elliott three times uh, you know they seem to only communicate with with uh with the treasurer and the chairperson on the board there is no clear communication jamie and it's not on, it's not on my part yeah and I, I have reached out so many times and, and tried to get answers and i don't they you know unless unless i'm asking the questions that they want to hear or, or we're discussing things in, to go in the, the direction that they want to go in because it's not only one direction they have. They're, they're obviously not, don't have an open mind to the whole project. And I do, in spite of what, it, what, what they want to think, I do have an open mind. And I would like to hear all the details and I would like to discuss them without an attorney defending every question that is, is being asked to the other commissioners. It's not right. And, and in my opinion, the, the attorney from Yale is representative of, of the two commissioners and not the Brantford Housing Authority as a whole. So that's why to me, Th this representation is poison to BHA. It's poison. And, you know, so, it, it, but like I said, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, wh what's the purpose of me being on this commission? If we can't get clear, transparent answers, if we can't have conversations with honest conversations with the other housing authority commissioners, well, then what's the sense? Yeah. And then, you know, I'm starting to lose. I, I don't understand it anymore. And I, I don't want to dramatize everything because there's been enough of drama in the past year and a half. I have never been on a commission that is this poorly run and this disgusting. And, this, and the stuff that continues to go on and doesn't change, it's horrific. I've never seen anything like it. 52 years old, I've never seen anything this ridiculous in my life. Well, I guess I, I, my, my recommendation and perhaps the, the board, the, the housing authority, to consider having a meeting, obviously, uh, a public meeting, however, with the agenda to really discuss on how the, uh, the commission members will communicate and interact and share information and have that discussed in a public forum uh, without um, outside interest. I think this is something uh, that we've heard from uh, now the members that have all spoke that are currently on the housing authority that there's a lack of communication and this housing authority needs to fix that. Um, so my, my suggestion would be that you hold a public meeting uh, and, and you iron out those issues uh, in terms of the communication without, the, I don't wanna use the term, well, interference isn't correct, but this is something that needs to be, uh, come from the five commission members and resolved internally in a public forum, but in the public. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, Jamie. Listen, I know everyone's tired. I want, I want to get off this thing too, because I actually missed a meeting because of this meeting here. So anyway, just, just another clear example is that poor lady that just got on as a housing authority commissioner. She just gets sworn in. The chairperson says, oh, we've discussed this budget. We've got to get this budget voted on tonight. We've got to get this budget through. It's got to be voted on tonight. We went over this. You don't just throw something down someone's throat and just propose a budget. That's not going over a budget. Yeah. I, we didn't go over that budget. I go over quite a few budgets every year. We have meetings. We discuss the budget. We go over the numbers, just like Jerry and I did with, with Beacon Development the other night. That's how you actually go over a budget. You actually pay attention to the numbers and, until it makes sense. Then maybe you have a good draft budget to propose to the membership. But to put someone in, in the middle of a meeting and force something down someone's throat, that's not in the best interest of the people. Yeah. Okay. I, thanks. All right. Uh, AC. Go ahead. Uh, Thank AC. you, Jamie. I just want to say again that Mark Colello has refused to even as much as okay. read the meeting minutes for many, for many agendas. I mean, when it's on agenda, he says, I'm too busy. I don't have time. He joins the meeting too late to even join. So I, I just want to say that he's been too busy to uh to address anything i have 
I can I have I have documented proof of all the times I communicate with him that he doesn't respond and I re I I, re I resend and resend re re requests from him about meeting times that might work and I, I get nowhere with him. So I, I have all that in documentation. Yeah. It's not like I'm not communicating. It's not like I'm trying to Jerry. Jerry, I will say, is a very responsive member of our board. The same stuff I send out to Mark, Jerry will respond to. Um, I, I appreciate Jerry's responsiveness. I get nothing from Mark. I get no no collaboration. I get no communication. I get no response from any any no. communication I send to him. So I'm really tired of being told that I don't communicate well with a board member when I have I have lots of documentation showing how many times I try and communicate with Mark and he doesn't respond. All right. As much as I hate to say this, I, I, I think we've already gone around the circle. Now it's just personal yeah. back and forth. Yeah, yeah I, I want to avoid that too. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you know, perhaps uh, I, I, I hear we, you made uh, Selectwoman Higgins and Selectman Dunbar. Um, we've heard a lot tonight. Uh, I know you kind of feel that we need the board to kind of. Uh, step up and address a lot of this. However, uh, do we want to have this discussion? Uh, obviously, we would have to do it in a public meeting on uh, what we would like to come out of this, of our board um, at the next meeting. Yeah, or, or, is, there or some kind of, is there a motion that you'd like to make tonight? Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion that we discuss this at, at either the next selectman meeting or or a special meeting just for this yeah. and and at that point in time well whichever works out for all the selectmen and um and then we can address it at that point in time and we'll just have that one item yep and how we I second that all right it's been moved uh by selectman Dunbar, second by selectman higgins all in favor say aye 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 all right thank you everybody for the thank you everyone take this item up at a upcoming uh Board of Selectors meeting. I believe we're still on correspondence. Uh, uh, I, I, I have to go back to one person that we said we asked that we go back to him. I don't want to forget. Uh, yeah, Mr. Cook well, had asked that we okay when we get on this subject. Yeah, we have we have several correspondence. Let me just read them all and then uh, thanks. Uh, and we'll go to that one at the end. Um, Atlantic Wharf uh, at the December. This is from uh, the RTM Donald H. Clerk at the December 16th, 2020 RTM meeting. The Atlantic Wharf matter was discussed at length at the meeting. The RTM members approved the motion. Hey, Siri, call Jay Pottinger. Calling Jay Pottinger. Uh, I want to mute. Um, was discussed. The members approved the motion to request the owner to cover the debris pile. As you have previously had conversations with the owner, the RTMs respectfully request that you contact the owner to discuss the motion passed by the RTM and advise the majority or minority leader of the owner's response. Uh, thank you in advance. And if you believe that someone other than yourself to speak to the owner, kindly inform the majority or minority leader. Okay, this was actually sent directly to me for selectman. However, I will just share that. I did um, once again uh, speak uh, to the owner regarding the request to uh, cover the, the, the pile. Um, I had reported that they had uh, hydro seeded the pile and it, you know, thinking that it was the uh, an effort to, if there was any uh, dust that was coming off, that would address that issue. Um, they do not feel that they're going to, at this time, that they want to cover it with the uh, um, the piles with uh, plastic. Uh, they don't want to go through the maintenance uh, or uh, uh, cost of doing that. Just to be clear, um, as we said, through the, this discussion, um, there was some uh, pre-demolition survey done. There was a mitigation plan. There was an abate, uh, abatement plan put in place. Uh, they had um, removed the hazardous material prior to demolition. 
uh, the, media, the building was then removed. Um, we had, uh, we addressed this issue with our local health department, um, I believe uh, DEP, as well as Department of Public Health have all uh, reviewed this. Um, they felt that there was, uh, their, their opinion, no imminent health risk due to uh, piles staying uncovered. I did just confirm uh, with our building official as well um, that in terms of the town's oversight, that all documentation uh, uh, was, was provided to the town that was required. And at this time, there's nothing outstanding from the town. So uh, I guess I will, uh, I see the minority leader is on uh, and I will communicate that conversation with the majority leader as well. All right. Okay. Uh, a couple other, I have three letters from uh, Mr. Wayne Cook. Dear Brantford Board of Selectmen, it is asked that an explanation be provided to the community as to why the number of items sent to the RTM several weeks ago for the Board of Selectmen consideration are not yet on the agenda. Thank you for your prompt attention to this matter. Sincerely, Wayne Cook. I believe we've been addressing those. Uh, dear Brantford Board of Selectmen, a growing number of citizens are concerned that the first selectman is continually to unconstitutionally and unethically implement measures to silence citizens in order to prevent them from presenting the facts about dishonesty and corruption in his administration. It is asked that Selectman Dunbar and Selectman Higgins each publicly address these citizens' concerns at your next meeting. Thank you for your prompt attention to this matter. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's been uh, uh, anything uh, implemented uh, to prevent anybody. I think we had uh, uh, plenty of uh, discussion tonight as well as at previous meetings. Um, I think th what we have implemented is uh, measures to ensure that we run a, an efficient and productive meeting. Uh, if the other selectmen would like to address that, uh, and I do have one more letter to read. Uh, dear board, Brantford Board of Selectmen, it is asked that the entire Board of Selectmen publicly address the growing concerns regarding the potentially hazardous debris pile on the Atlantic Wharf site. At a recent RTM meeting, the first selectman was asked by the RTM members to contact the property owner about the following, about the following. RTM concerns with hydro seeding and piles, covering the piles in some other manner, and reporting back to the RTM on further environmental testing. Instead, in, in, in direct disregard from RTM members' concerns, the piles were hydro seeded the very next day, leaving serious concerns that the first selectman has any intention of addressing RTM questions and ensuring the public safety of the site. Thank you for your prompt attention to this matter. Um, I think that's been addressed uh, and I think I have relayed the concerns. And I've also addressed uh, the community, you know, what we have heard. All right, anything else? Yeah, I just think Mr. Cook has his hand up from something he wanted to say earlier before we went into Parkside. Okay, we have a number of hands up and we'll start going through those. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Cook. Now you muted yourself again, there. First of all, let me say, and I'm going to be here for five minutes or three minutes, whatever, because I'm speaking the correspondence right now. The way you run these meetings, the one of my letters, is completely wrong. You should not be up there like, you know, George Orwell predicted, you know, with your buttons, letting people speak and not speak. Before you do that, why don't you let a meeting get out of hand first and then see what happens? But what you're doing, you're controlling people. Like in this case here, if it wasn't for Representative, I'm sorry, Becca Selectman Dunbar, you wouldn't have let me speak to these items. What you're doing is you're unfairly controlling citizens' rights to speak because you have a button in front of you. If you did not have this button in front of you, if we didn't have the pandemic going on, you would not have this ability. So you're clearly abusing the privilege that you have right now. And that's why you took it away from Trista, because she ran it fairly, and you want to control citizens' rights to speak. So let's not make any bones about that. You, you, you know, this is wrong, 
and I'm going to complain to the governor because, he, according to you, he implemented this, this, you know, Order 9B. Well, what you're doing is you're abusing it, and I resent it as an American citizen, and I resent it as a resident of this town. As far as the Atlantic Wharf goes, a couple of citizens and myself went to the East Shore Health Department District board meeting, and we told them exactly what's going on down there, and there was an interest there. And I called out personally Director Paracone because said he, what he, he wasn't doing his job because he's not doing his job, and you're not doing your job either. And why don't you give you know uh, Mr. Costanzo an opportunity to speak, maybe not tonight, but let him address this board before you start to just say categorically that everything's fine and they did everything perfectly. No, they did not. No, they did not. I'm not going to call. I'm not going to say you're lying. The truth is you're lying because they did not. And we can show that over and over. And over. Yeah, keep smirking. Keep smirking. Because the point is, you know, that's what you do. You lie and then you smirk. And the fact is, this is wrong. That's wrong, too. As far as the, um, the items, as far as the signs go, you know, and it was referred to the, uh, the RTM from the, uh, I'm sorry, Board of Circuit by the RTM. I'd like to address that at the next meeting because obviously it's getting close to nine o'clock here. And the fact of the matter is I want a screen share and I sent letters to both you and, and sorry, Selectman Dunbar, Selectman Higgins, asking that this be placed on the agenda and I be allowed to screen share because not only to Mr. Um, I'm sorry, Selectman Dunbar's point, you know, should we have some kind of a side ordinance? And that's why the RTM shouldn't have sent it. But there's a constitutionality issue here. And the fact is you removed my signs selectively because of the saying town hall corrupt. And I said over and over, if they said happy birthday, Brantford, you would not have touched those. So there's a real U.S. constitutionality issue here that this board has got to address. And quite frankly, I'm going to bring it back to the RTM because they should be addressing it. And the other thing I, that the board sent to you, I'm sorry, not the board, the RTM, was they wanted an ad hoc Tabor committee, and which you just dismissed at the last meeting because you're giving away the Tabor property. And you say you don't want it developed. But what you're doing is, is you're in essence developing it by giving it away to the green cult. And that's what you keep doing. You give them all these things that they want down there. And in essence, they're going to be completely entrenched and you're never going to get them off with their green projects. So don't say you want it developed because the point is you're developing it your way. And that's an absolute violation of RTM and town rule 73-3. Which means that the, which says that the RTM has control of any allocation of real property. And so again, you're not paying attention to anybody but yourself. And I'm going to be in here over and over and over and over again. And I'm going to be reminding you and the town that what you're doing is wrong and it is dishonest. So let me just leave it at this. That has got to be addressed. Tabor, the Zoom issue has got to be addressed. Lord knows Parkside's got to be addressed. You heard what a mess is that is down there under your watch. And not only that, but the sign issue has to be addressed. And I want that sign issue, and I'm asking respectfully of the board of selectmen, I want them to weigh in right now, the entire board, to be heard next meeting and allow a citizen, namely myself, to present a screen share, which will reveal to the entire community how abusive you were, both public works, and most importantly, the United States Constitution. And I'd like the whole board to weigh in on this right now, not just you, because you're not fair, and you're not dishonest, and, and you're not honest. That's all I have to say right now. I'd like to hear from the other two selectmen, please. I don't know what you want to hear. I want I, to hear that. I've I get already said that I think there should be a sign ordinance. I believe that you'll be able to make your presentation. I'm only one member of the board, but I don't have a problem with screen sharing. Actually, okay. the RNO committee did it last night. It came out pretty well. I thought it did, too, and I'd like to hear it. Selectman Higgins, could you let me screen share at next meeting, Selectman Higgins? No, at this time, I'm not in favor of it. Why not? It's just all I'm doing is expressing, you know, my fundamental right to speak through graphics. I should be able to do that. Why can't I do that? You've done it over and over and over. And no, I have not. I have not presented to the board. Please let me finish, Mr. Cook. Please let me finish. I listened very carefully to you all night and the last meeting as well. I am... You are welcome to say whatever it is you feel, but it's the same things over and over again, and it wastes our time. That is, but the board needs to go forward. We hear your complaints, 
and we take it under consideration. No, that, I'm that's not in favor wrong. of it. I don't know. You know, Angie, what are you listening to? That is so wrong. Shame on you for saying that because you never answer my questions. You just throw them down the line. And this one was sent to you by the RTM, which is the sign issue. And, you, and you're just dismissing it. I want to address the sign issue, which is right in front of you for the first time. And I want to present screen sharing to, to best exhibit that. And you're saying no? Is that what you're saying? No, not at this time, no. Why? Why? What's the matter I've with just, you? I've answered your question. No, you have not. No, you absolutely yeah. have not. Shame you, on you, Angie. Right. Shame it's quite, on you. Want to hear something that you want no, to hear? No, I'm sorry. Hear. I'm sorry. With all respect, it didn't take you very long. No, to get I don't this think on. you have any respect. It didn't take now. you very long to get this honest, did all it? Right. Well, then, uh, 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 no, I mean it. A shame on you, Angie. Thank you so much. Okay. Can I uh, make a motion to adjourn this meeting? Yeah. Yep, you motion. Can. Did you second that? I'll second it. All right. All right. Thank you. We'll take that uh the the other item up at the other meeting. We've got through everything. Motion to the move, second it all in favor. Say aye. Aye. Good night. Good night. Good night. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.